definitely an accomplished senior class for the Red Hawks that's going out with their last home game tonight. Regular season home game. These seniors are uh, really carrying the team this year with the two leading point scorers in Zach Hamilton and Ethan LaFleur. Frontier coming off a loss a couple games ago. First loss of the season, breaking their undefeated streak. And tonight they'll be without goalkeeper Peter Bronke, who suffered some ligament damage in his lower back. So that's a big loss for Frontier, but it's next man up, and that's going to be Con Connor Wakeus tonight in goal. The so Holding uh, Chicopee to only one goal in his tenure. I see Frontier trying to play the way they've played all year giving those long balls to the wings, trying to force something on the sides and then give it into the middle to experienced finishers like Lafleur and Hamilton. And Central trying their best to keep it in Frontier's half of the field and slow down that Frontier offense, put the pressure on Frontier's back line. All right, and we'll hand it over to public address announcer, uh, Marty Sanderson. Financial support for FCAT's coverage of local high school sports provided by Leader Home Centers, your hometown home center with five locations to serve you in Amherst, South Deerfield, Barrie, Greenfield, and Brattleboro, Vermont, or online at leaderhome.com. Visit them for all your building material needs. Raymond Financial Services, LLC. Take charge of your financial future. Insurance, investments, and benefits for individuals and employers. Attorney Daniel Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. Good evening and welcome to tonight's senior night for our boys' soccer team. The parents can actually head out onto the field and get ready I guess and Coach Totman has put together a little program here that I would like to present. Coach Totman writes, this senior class is a special class to me and has had a special place in the history of Frontier Soccer. These six seniors have witnessed and been a part of the rise of the program over the course of their careers five years, five years ago in 2012 when these seniors were seventh graders I was in my second year coaching this team and we only won two games that season. We were one of the worst teams in Division 3, having moved up to Division 3 from Division 4 just two years prior. Since that time, these six seniors now stand here as the two-time reigning Western Mass Division 3 champs and are currently ranked sixth in all of Western Massachusetts. With a 10-1-3 record through 14 games, dating back Dating back to the midway point of last season, in their last 24 games, these seniors have a record of 18-2-4 while only allowing 11 goals and not more than one goal in any of those 24 games. That's consistency and it's consistency that is one of the things that makes this senior class great. These guys are very consistent with their play on the field and with their effort and practice and also with their commitment to the team. While I would say that the two previous senior classes did most of the dirty work in building the program, it's this class that learned from those classes and has carried the torch to even greater heights. These seniors expect to win every time they take the field and now have passed that on to the younger players. These guys have done a tremendous job this season being leaders on and off the field to the younger classes. The impact they have had on this program is greatly appreciated and will never be forgotten. Now we would like to start introducing our senior class. First, Zach Hamilton. <laughs> Zach is a two-year captain and the absolute leader of this team. Zach has been a starter since he was a sophomore and has really been one of our best players his whole career. He is no doubt one of the biggest reasons this team is the defending Division III champions. Zach plays the game at a very high level and makes everyone around him better. He is arguably the the calmest player I've ever seen on the soccer field. I like to say that Zach plays like a pro. While, while his on the field contributions are obvious when you see him play, his off the field contributions are vast as well. 
Despite being very talented, Zach is a humble person and a team first player. He has done a great job being a leader and captain over the past two seasons. When Zach's career is over, it'll be said he will go down. He will no doubt go down as one of the all-time great players to have played at Frontier. Zach Hamilton. Our next senior, Alex Georgita. Alex is our Alex is our other senior captain this year, and Alex is a great player in his own right. He has been one of our starting center backs over the past two years and has contributed hugely to this team's success. He has had a lot to do with our defensive dominance over the past two years as a player. I would say that Alex has the total package. He is a great tactically and technically and also plays with a ton of heart. He rarely gets beat in one-on-one -on -one situations and is always in the right place at the right time to make a big tackle. He he wins almost every head ball. He, he organizes our defense and makes sure everyone is on the same page. He is also a, a great offensive player and moves great, makes great passes out of the back. Alex is, loud by all, is loved by all of his teammates and when he eventually uh, plays his last game, he will no doubt be greatly missed. Alex Georgita. Our next senior, Ethan LaFleur. Ethan is a two-year starter and has been our leading goal scorer over the past two seasons. Ethan's contributions over the last seasons, over last season and this season are huge. For my money, Ethan is the most clutch player on this team. Whenever we have needed a goal, it seems that Ethan has always come through for, for us. Ethan has that special something that all great strikers have Ethan has always really exemplified what Frontier Soccer is all about. His consistent effort on a day in, day, day in, day out basis is remarkable. I can't think of a single moment where I ever thought that he wasn't giving his all. Ethan has also improved a lot over his career, and there isn't a single striker in Western Mass that I would put over him at this point. I also have to point out what he did in the Western Mass Finals last year playing against perennial favorite Belchertown. Ethan scored two world-class goals and a 2-1 win, including the game winner with 10 minutes left on the clock. It's performances like that that define Ethan's outstanding career, Ethan LaFleur. Our next senior, Tyler Mayrand. Tyler has been a starter over the past two seasons and has been a huge contributor to this team. His speed and dribbling ability has given fits to almost every outside back that he's faced. Tyler's athleticism is off the charts. It seems at least once a game that he, that he does something that has us all shaking our heads wondering how he did that. Tyler has been a great teammate over the course of his career and has exemplified the team first attitude that we preach. Tyler is a special player and his contributions to this team won't be forgotten. Tyler Mayrand. Our next senior, Ben Arnold. Ben has also been a starter for this team over the past two seasons, contributing greatly to our success. Ben is one of those special, special players that you love to go to battle with. He's very competitive and plays the game with a lot of heart. He is 100% what you call a gamer. Ben has also improved a lot over his career and is currently the third leading goal scorer on the team this season. He also lays claim to getting the game-winning assist in last year's Western Mass Final when he set up Ethan for the go-ahead goal. Much like his classmates, Ben's a hard worker and has had a great attitude over the course of his career. This team will definitely miss not having number six out on the field next year, Ben Arnold. Our next senior, Noah Graves. Yeah. Noah Graves is the sixth member of this year's senior class, and although he hasn't been a starter, he has no doubt made his mark on the program. 
This year Noah has played some very important minutes for this team and has come up huge. Whenever his number has been called, he has been ready and performed at a high level. Noah has a great attitude and also has a great sense of humor. He brings a lot to this team just with his personality. He has been a great example to his teammates throughout his career and especially this season. This team will certainly miss number seven next season, Noah Graves. Congratulations to our senior class. And Coach Totman also would like to thank all the parents. We would now like to introduce our visitors from Central High School. First, their reserves. Number 13, Jawad Murad. Number 5, Joshua Rios Reyes. Number 4, Andrew Johnson. Number 15, Ivan Mejia. Number 16, Larry Morales. Number 17, Jordan Rodriguez. Number 14, Xavier Aguilar. And number 12, Rupesh Darje. Starters for Central. Number one, uh, number six, Logan Papuga. Number 10, Joseph Dominguez. Number three, Brandon Carmona. Number eight, Hussein Abdi. Number seven, Madia Kuku. Number nine, Ben Ryan. Number two, Joseph McCoy. Number 18, Taylor Joffroy. Number 20, Leando Ray. Number 11, Juan Hernandez Jr. And in goal, Orlando Martinez. Central is coached by Scott Arell. Now for the Red Hawk Reserves. Number 18, Ben Morse. Number 21, Ari Venegas. Number 2, Tim Barrington. Number eight, Tom Kirkalonis. Number five, Kip Newman. Number 11, Ethan DeMaio. Number 13, Sam Battisti. Number 15, Sam Felton Emmerich. Number 22, Ryan Loveland. And number 11, Hunter Hannum Wells. Now for the Frontier Starters, in goal, number 95, Connor Watkiss. Number 17, Alex Georgita. Number 4, Noah Jakes. Number 14, Tenzin Sandu. Number 7, Noah Graves. Number 19, Doug Haneski. Number 9, Connor Bagden. Number 12, Tyler Mayrand. Number 10, Zach Hamilton. Number 6, Ben Arnold. And number 3, Ethan LaFleur. The Red Hawks are coached by Dale Totman. Zach Hamilton, number 10, Captain LaFleur. Tyler Mayrand. Number 12, right mid. Ethan LaFleur, number 3, striker. Ben Arnold, number 6, striker. Noah Graves, number 7, left back. Alex Gurgitsa, center back, number 2, captain. Let's go Hawks. Let's go Hawks. <laughs> Alright, we're set to get underway here. 40 minutes on the clock. As per the norm. <laughs> Just a great tribute to these seniors. Really, they have worked for many years for this varsity team, and they deserve to be recognized like that on a night like this. Who's your favorite senior, Carson? <laughs> oh, man, you know, 
Such a hard question. I know, I'm just joking. Great character in every single one of them. And you know, if you're central, you want to come in and spoil this party, don't you? Well, that was a bit of a failure there <laughs> to start off the night. Water <laughs> bottle flung from about the 35-yard line, and the top popped off. Yeah, it's not how uh, Wake just <laughs> wants to start the night, but I'm sure yeah, he'll make up for that. He just lost all his drink there, but I'm sure he'll drink the sweat of his opponents after <laughs> the night. Cause he'll make them work for every single goal. Well, I would hope so. This will be a very crucial game for both teams. Frontier needing this win to garner an even better seed in the upcoming tournament, and Central really badly needing this win just to make it to the tournament. Now there's no need to fret because Peter Bronke looks to be delivering another water bottle over to Wakus. I'm sure he'll be uh, Wakus's mentor tonight. Wakus not having played much in goal, but certainly having a natural knack for it. Look at that speed from number 11 on Central. Hernandez putting an early attempt. Ooh. <laughs> he is their leading goal scorer, so definitely a player to watch for Frontier's defense. Keeping him out of the 18 and away from getting shots will be very important for this Frontier back line. And the loss of Bronchi isn't really just about what he does on the field. It's about the, the leadership that he brings to that the back of that Frontier defense as well. Yeah, he directs them on every single free kick, telling them where to go. And really just giving them guidance to uh, make his job a lot easier. Some great communication here early on from Frontier. Hear a lot of talking. Exactly what Tommy wants to hear. A big send up the line. And that'll be a goal kick. The way I see this uh, goalie switch for the Frontier is a lot like the Packers, the Green Bay Packers QB situation right now. Aaron Rodgers, star quarterback, is out, and it's just well, got to be the next guy up with Brett, Hun Brett Hundley. <laughs> Wouldn't say it's as hopeless as that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, think, I don't think it's too hopeless, but we'll see what happens, won't we? We will. Packers not having an easy time with Hundley uh, this week. Let's here focus we on soccer here. <laughs> Hamilton making a try. Can't quite get around. Central defense. So the difference between in this matchup earlier in the season was just one goal from Connor Bagden. Both goalkeepers played well. Uh, Orlando Martinez had six saves for Central. And Bronchi had five saves, but it's going to be a different, different outlook tonight. Frontier in a position here. Central having a shaky start to the season, losing their first four or five games, and then finishing the last 11, eight and three. So they've really turned it around since that loss to Frontier. Frontier, I think, will be expecting a whole nother team tonight. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's a tough league these teams are playing in, isn't it? Yeah, you got Holyoke, Chicopee, some very good teams. There's no easy games, that's for sure. No, Frontier really has to step up and go against the D1 competition. That was Graves on the throw-in to Haneski. Graves getting his first start of the season on senior night. Love to see that. Yep, all season he's been getting his minutes where he can get them. And tonight he really gets to go out there and show everybody that he can start the game just as well as anybody else can. The big throw from Arnold. Central looking for some early offense. It's a nice night here tonight at Frontier. It's a little hot, almost 70 degrees. Pretty shocking to see some uh, long spandex on these players. 
Yep. Might just feel good for their muscles, though, you know, once they get attached to some kind of wear. Can't stop wearing it. becomes a tradition. Oh, nice ball. And good save by Wakis. Getting out of trouble there. And looking for Lafleur. Bag controlling it, playing it to Hamilton. Who looks in the middle, now looks for Lafleur. Who can't quite get his foot on it. Nice look by Hamilton there. Yeah, Lafleur just an inch off of really hitting that ball with some power. It really is hard to believe we're all, almost all the way through the regular season of the fall sports here. Yeah, this season has just flown by. And a lot of teams from Frontier are going to be looking to make that next step in the postseason. Yeah, from field hockey, volleyball, football, soccer, all the way to cross country. Other than the volleyball team, who would you say has the uh, best shot to come away with a Western Mass Championship from Frontier? Just saying other than the volleyball team because, you know, they win every year. <laughs> yeah, that has become a perennial activity for them. There's weight kiss collecting. Well, with uh, field hockey, maybe looking towards another rematch with Greenfield, they seem to have a pretty good shot to get revenge after taking that painful loss last year. But you also have soccer looking to win their third straight cross country, looking to and take a their dynasty talented squad to a Western Mass Championship at last. Yeah, that would be the first ever. And then, and then you can't forget about the football team looking. I believe they're in second in their league right now, and so they might even get a home playoff game. That'd be really great for them. Of course, in football, you've got Wakona up in the hills. You do. They are pretty much a powerhouse. They are a powerhouse. Frontier will need a spectacular game to hang with those guys. In all of Western Mass, competing against D1, D2 teams. I think they're top five? Yeah, I believe so. Very impressive. Ooh, ooh. Wakus. Bit of a misplay by Wakus there. But no harm done. Working out the kinks early on in his first start at goalkeeper. Was that Morris with the throw in over there? I believe that was Jocks. Oh, yes. And looking up towards Lafleur on that right side. Hamilton coming in. Arnold coming in, Connor looking up top. Bagden. Central really doing a great job sprinting back on defense. A lot of effort there and it pays off for them. Yeah, not getting those men back, giving Frontier that advantage with numbers could really prove uh, costly late in the game. Georgie to clear that out of bounds. Smart decision. Yeah, he's definitely the rock in the back of that defense. Yep, he's holding that young line together with a sophomore and Sindhu and junior and Jocks. And he's really done that for a couple of years. Although, of course, last year he had the help of uh, all Western Mass and all state player Dan Bronke there in the back. Yep, he's had to assume the leadership role in that defensive line. Bagden looking up. Good pass by Central. Nobody there. And now Wake is trying to turn it around for Hamilton. Everyone's calling for the ball. Yeah. Hamilton decides to play it into Arnold. And Eski looks for Bagden. Bagden fighting for the ball. And Lafleur with a 
well-placed shot, but not enough power to... Just need a little more sauce behind that one. Yeah, that shot had weak sauce. What kind of sauce do you think it could have used? <laughs> I think you could use some uh, zesty buffalo sauce. You know, some real yeah. spice on it. Yeah. Arnold's calling for it. And a good, oh. hard shot. That was a rocket from Morris, but a great save by Central's keeper. Yeah, a little more placement on that, and that would have surely been a goal. Now yeah, Central's going for a bit of a counterattack here. But it looks to be cleaned up by Frontier's D. And Wakeus with the safety play. Passing 10 minutes in here. Some good early action from both sides. Neither side seem to take total advantage of the other. Frontier just with the edge on shots on goal. Yeah, they seem to have had more legitimate chances though. Yeah, Central's having a little trouble materializing a solid attack. Got a nice crescent moon here tonight. Now tell me, Alex, is that is that waxing or is that waning? You know, I, I couldn't tell you that. Yeah, it takes a real genius in uh, <laughs> celestial, <laughs> celestial movements to yeah. figure that one out. Back in the third grade, studied the moon cycle, you know. Oh, yeah. I haven't really refreshed on it since then. Ever go on some moonwalks? No. 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 That was our thing. Good defense by Jocks. Sending it at that line, able to keep it in. So now Frontier on the counterattack. You know, speaking of the sky, this past weekend was the Ornoid uh, meteor shower. Oh, and how was that? Did you get a chance to have some visibility up there in Vermont? Uh, you know, not not really. You know, the stars were night. Nice. I couldn't stay up late enough, you know, to the 1 a.m., 2 a.m. where it's really peaking, you know. Yeah, that Hyde Park uh, visibility isn't like that Kraftburg visibility. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty similar, actually, at each place. Dangerous play there. Central able to get it out of that box. Central goalkeeper, though, coming away with a little bit of a limp. We've got some more fans piling in tonight. See some of the jerseys of the senior players. Always a tradition here. Always a tradition. To wear one of these players away jerseys is a great honor to some. And you got to give credit to these central fans over there, too. I mean, they, they've made a long trek here to Frontier to support their team, and they've yeah. really got a few, a few people over there. Yeah, they're showing up. That's how you know there's a certain culture surrounding a team. And Frontier stands surely filling up. And as the night progresses, I'm sure we'll see more and more people coming out to see Frontier's final home game for these six seniors. And that'll be on Central. Didn't see much contact there, but man in the yellow shirt did. And Georgita. Looks like he'll be showcasing that powerful foot. And that's nearly to goal. Oh. Hamilton can't quite put his head on that. Sometimes you'd like to just see him really put it put a chance at the net right there. Yeah, I mean he's got the distance. Yeah. You know, he gets the Why even try to pass it? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta try to get on sports in our top ten plays. Yeah, Georgita's definitely got a lot of game though. In more ways than one. And uh what uh, <laughs> <laughs> a 
not quite sure what you're insinuating there, but uh, <laughs> well, I mean, he's not just. Let's a, assume that that's soccer uh, based. Of course, I just mean he's he's got the physical abilities and the mental abilities on the on the field. Yeah, he really masters uh, both sides of the ball. A veteran in his craft. Frontier looking to play it inside. Can't get by those central players on that corner. And now Central trying to run with it. So far, each each coach is stuck with the team starters with uh, Central not having one sub yet, and Frontier just subbed out the senior Noah Graves. So both, both sides are sticking with the big guns so far. Georgie to trying to track that ball down. ball in there but yeah Wake is trying to come out to punch it couldn't quite connect <laughs> it's gonna be frontier ball oh no it'll be central no central just yeah. I was gonna say that was definitely out of frontier Look at this run-up from number nine. He's gonna. S this yeah. better go far, otherwise it's a little over dramatization here. And it's not uh, not quite an Arnold throwing. Yeah. Speaking of Arnold, trying to track that down. And a good play into the corner. Nice play by good decision by Wake is coming out. Yeah, it would have gone right to the center player there. Yeah, Hernandez looking to. Put that in the back of the net. That got by him. And now Hamilton looking up towards Hineski. Playing into the floor. He can't quite find his man. And good play by Wakis. Some good passing by Frontier's offense, but sometimes you wonder if it might be better if they weren't so quick to pass to each other, you know. Take a few more touches. Yeah, patience will be very key. Not trying to rush a goal. And now it's like a pinball machine out here, going back and forth. Yeah, Hineski really shot out of a cannon on that last shot attempt, didn't he? Oh yeah, he was going for it all. And here we've got some central players, JV players it looks like, getting their exercise walking around the track. They're on their second lap now. Oh, yeah. They're trying to uh, <laughs> get in some late night cardio. Can't blame them. <laughs> exactly right. Maybe we should all just walk around the track while we take in the game. Yeah, you know, you really can't put a press on fitness. <laughs> no. Oh, oh nice. Oh. Good idea there by Lafleur. Lafleur giving it back to Arnold, but. Central looking towards that left corner again. And good move. Getting by and going for the hard driven shot. Wakis off his line a little bit coming forward. Healthy fan section here tonight at Frontier from the students wanting to support their seniors. Yep, they are a reliable fan base to come out when they're needed. And this Friday night we've got a uh, Frontier football senior night as well, so everyone should try to make it out to that if they can. Yep, that'll be a big game, capping off the high school careers of a uh, thousand yard rusher, Aaron Landry, among and Stephen Wordley, who looks like he's gonna be getting a thousand yards. Yeah, I believe he's at about 800 right now, and with a couple more regular season games and possibly one more playoff game, it seems very likely for Frontier to have 2,000 yard rushers this year. 
and then Maddie C, the legendary uh, offensive lineman who's paved the way for a lot of those rushes. Yeah, he's really been a leader on that uh, offensive line. And defensive line, of course. Yeah, being one of the uh, older people on that line with only one or two other seniors yeah. joining him. Uh, Central looking to... Another throw in. Another big throw in. It's got the distance. And, and that's a there goal. it is. Wow. Just a little too bunched up there. Yeah, not a lot of communication. It just trickled into the left side of the net there. They were able to get a head on it, and Wakis either couldn't see the ball because of all the players around him or just couldn't get out to it and was able to trickle into that bottom corner. So that long run up to the throw and paid off after all. Now we'll see how uh, Frontier responds to this, putting on Barrington and Venegas for Morse and Arnold. Yeah, some quick switches by uh, Topman after that. Oh, that actually, that'll be Arnold, Lafleur, and Marin. Or just Arnold and Marin. Some miscommunication here. Now Frontier is figuring out. Just waiting for the wife. Draft whistle, I think. And the report is in that Central's number eight was the one who got that goal. Yeah, it was one of those where you don't really know what they could have done, but it seems like something could have been done. Central goal in the 20th minute, scored by number eight. Hussein Abdi, assisted by number nine, Ben Ryan. And we're about to get a train here at Frontier Regional School. I'm telling you, it wouldn't be a game without it. Exactly. Whether it comes in the beginning or at the end. You know, I would have given my uh, classic Here Comes the Train, but I've been receiving a lot of hate for that. So, you know, I'm going uh, with to withhold my emotions tonight. <laughs> don't let the haters push you down, man. Yeah. Cough, cough, Sam Parsons. Oh, this is your show, man. This is your <laughs> show. This isn't their show. Yeah, you know. And Abdi, looking down that side, picks up a hard challenge. Ooh, chance of all ball coming from that. And the ref coming over to say something to Georgita, number 17. Yes, the crowd was not happy with that call, were they? No card, but surely a warning given. So, I'm not a trained person, as you know, but I always wonder, are they intentionally doing the horn or whatever, or is that just done every once in a while? Because we just heard it again down the way. Hmm. So when they come by, are they just doing it for the fans, or is, are, they that, uh, o are they always tooting the horn? Yeah, I'm not sure. Or that might be just trying to make sure that anybody who's near the tracks is aware that a train's coming and not stupid enough to <laughs> <laughs> be lingering. Oh, man. And a handball is called a Bagnon. Not happy with that call. Yeah, and Eski and Bagnon were both there calling for the handball on the central player, but... You know, and a them. hard challenge by Morris again. Frontier showing early signs of frustration. Yeah, you get the sense things are getting a little chippy here. Yeah, they've really got to hope to control a little bit of that. And the ref having more words. And no card given. Yeah, not a good sign when the, when the refs have to talk to you if your team a couple times because, yeah, you want, you want the refs to be happy with you. And an interesting kick given. Yeah. I think he wanted the curve and it never did. Yeah, he was uh, <laughs> hoping for a player to make some type of play on that. Yeah. And Georgita taking his anger out on the ball. It's definitely good for Frontier to face some adversity here, though, before their postseason run. Yeah, they're not down very often. And, you know, this 
there's a very good chance this won't be the last time they're down and they'll need to really learn how to respond to this situation if they want to make another run at Western Mass Championship. Because what you do in these moments is very important. And if I'm central right now, I've got this 1-0 lead and I'm uh, looking to qualify for postseason. I just pack it in defensively and try to make sure they don't get another goal. That could be a good strategy. But one goal, you know, the insurance with a two-goal lead is just so great. But that might be what they're hoping for here. Wakis has shown off that baseball arm a few times tonight, hasn't he? Yeah, he's really uh, sticking with uh, those throws rather than the punts. Oh, and it looks like he's got an injury on the right side. Is that George? No, it's not Georgita. Is it Arnold? That might be Venegas. Oh, yes. Uh-oh. Helped off by teammate Barrington. You hate to see this, don't you? Yeah, having just come on as a sub. And Tottenham's going to take him the rest of the way. Let's hope nothing too serious for this young piece to this team. It looks like he's walking off mostly under his own power, which is always a good sign. Yeah, hopefully he'll be able to provide some some help still for this game. Yeah, depth certainly isn't one of the best best aspects of this team, so you know you certainly hope one of the key uh, bench players is going to be all right for them. Mm -hmm. His uh, speed and overall tenacity on the field really. Uh, did you, you catch? Know, did you catch what happened? It. No, you know, I saw I saw Central kick it up, and it seemed like he almost got like hit hit by the follow through, and oh. maybe just got clipped on the leg somewhere. Good defense by Sindhu. And looking up towards Hernandez again, who goes off towards that right side. Good defense by Morse. Hernandez just has some great moves, though, and a lot of speed, as we've seen. Central trying to pass it around. Oh, fitness. Ooh. Not, uh, not too much luck with the passing. Ooh. So right now it looks like Frontier is the team that's packing it in. And <laughs> yeah, they're not. Central is almost more spread out than they are. Good play by Morse. Central trying to maneuver, but can't with all these white shirts around. I think I just heard Bagdon yell, up, boys, as if he wants the attack to move up a little bit. Yeah, he's definitely some frustration there. No, being down is hard position to be in. Counterattack again. Ooh, good idea. And Haneski with the lift. Hamilton keeping it in the center. And Jock's trying to. Mm. Not much organization right now. Yeah, really from either side. It's kind of been sloppy since the goal, and even the goal itself was a bit sloppy. Yeah, there's certain, certainly an element of luck. In that. <laughs> All right, time for tonight's uh, trivia question regarding Frontier Sports. Mm. Uh, we're heading into the winter here, so we've got a question about basketball. All right. Who was the Red Hawks' last 1,000-point scorer, male or female? That is a good question. I'm sure our listeners will have a fun time thinking that one over. Yeah, and we'll go over the answer in the second half.
got about 13 minutes to go. And it appears one side has called timeout. I'm not quite sure who. It was Frontier. Both teams uh, looking to have their coaches speak some organization into their games. Tottenham really looks a bit confused on uh, what's going on right now. Yeah, Frontier looks a little deflated overall, and uh, Central seems inflated. Some guys coming over to the sideline, jumping up and down, hands in the air. Yeah, this one goal lead. Uh, They've got some confidence. This gives them confidence, yeah. So have you got any ideas on that trivia question? I think I have uh, one idea. <laughs> I'll wait till the second half, though. Try not to yeah, spoil yeah, it for our listeners. As you did last time. That's true. No hard feelings. No, you know, I was just playing the game. <laughs> Trying to partake in something. <laughs> and we also have to survey the fan section to decide who our fan of the game will be. Some, uh, some very uh, high quality nominees, although nobody's getting too rowdy tonight. No, nobody's getting too crazy. We see uh, a lot of supporters though, a lot of school colors. Yeah, the Hawks hats are out again for the for the season, even though it's not too uh, cold tonight. No, as soon as uh, we get later on towards uh, Thanksgiving Day in football, I'm sure we see lots of heavy clothing out there in the stands. All right, it looks like the timeout is just about over. Hopefully this uh, short respite will provide helpful for both teams to gather themselves. And that'll go out of bounds, so not exactly what Georgina wanted on that. No, I'm sure he's looking for one of his attackers on the left, but seemed to be just a little bit too much to the left. And Central looking for more of that early offense down the side. And that'll be a goal kick for Wakus. Or for Georgita. Just a bit of a lackadaisical feel here. Yeah, not too much not too much noise. Not as much as I'm used to. This environment. Yeah, you know, Santos came in and silenced the crowd. Yeah, I think uh the crowd might do well to get a little bit loud and try and louden this frontier offense. Get some chance going. Yeah. Always good to hear those when you're out on the field. Aneski looking to play it back to Bagdon. Looking to play it back to Aneski. And Jock's trying to play around with it a little too much. And Abdi is down to the races again. Good stop by Sandy. A little too much sauce on that one. <laughs> yeah, that was that was just mustard right there. Nothing special. And you never want too much mustard. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you want the right amount of sauce, you know. You can't can't be drowning <laughs> in sauce. Yeah. But if you know you have too little sauce, you know, there's no kick, no flavor. Yeah. It's really an art to try and get that, <laughs> that perfect amount. It is, and that's why dipping's been invented. So, you know, if, if, if one time you fail, you can just dip next time and you can change. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit harder to relate that to <laughs> passing. But it's like with French fries. You just got it. Every time you get a new fry and new ketchup, you got a new opportunity to get the dipping just right. That's true. Every single yeah. player opening all these doors <laughs> for new passes. <laughs> yeah. Sauce ratio, very important. Oh, the big throw. Oh, and how high can you kick it? Morse. Maybe thinking about going out for the field goal kicking <laughs> Next year, no, just kidding. 
speaking of which, Matty Hilda's been doing a great job in the field, field goal kicking uh, unit for Frontier. They've actually been hitting some extra points the last few games. Yeah, instead of having to go for the two-point conversion every time. Morris, you know, really trying to just tear the skin off that ball. Yeah. <laughs> And one of the lovely ball boys out here went and retrieved it very quickly. Got to love to see that effort from the younger, <laughs> the younger players. Hopefully that effort will uh, transform the uh, <laughs> effort for the team in the coming years. Exactly. And a hard challenge by Central. A little confusion on Whose ball that is? I believe that's Central's. Nope. Just wasn't standing in the right place. And they're going to look for a counterattack here with. Look for Hernandez again up that side. And Central trying to bring their men down. Oh, and Georgito says no to that that little fanciness from... No, he does not want that around. Oh, and nice a good pass. ball to Lafleur. But collected well by that central keeper, having the good sense to come out and take the... Oh. It's a race. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, oh man. And central looking out. Scary, scary or turn to the Frontier looking out, yeah. Central... Wakus has got done a good job of getting out there, but he's got to corral the ball here. Yeah, I don't think his hands are so trained for the job as Gronkies were. Ooh, ooh, Arnold taking one to the right to the face, right to the dome. Yeah. All all real men take him to the face once in a while. We we've seen that. We've all seen that Gillette uh, ad. And Lafleur with an opportunity to tie the game. Ball just a little too far out in front of him. Yeah. Oh, great show of sportsmanship by the central keeper. Great show of class. Great show of class. That's what you love to see. That's what it's all about. Opponents respecting each other. And Hernandez. Oh. Hernandez is just causing some headaches here for the frontier defense. Yes, he is. Almost picked up a so deflection quick. off Sindhu that, from our angle, looked like it almost was going into the goal. And now he's demonstrating to the referee how he just got fouled. Yeah, he wants everybody to know. <laughs> he's really quite the player, though. Very important for this team. True and looking high in the air to Cuckoo. Can't quite get his head on that. Hernandez is really the epitome of the saying, one of my personal favorite sayings, hard over height. Mm-hmm. For sure. Messy clear. And now Frontier with an opportunity to pass around and oh. look for an opening. Someone's got to tell Haneski there that he's got a man on. Yeah, communication's key. And now Hernandez looking for a D on the side. Can't quite get it in. Gives them another corner. Central, they've got their game plan. And they're executing it very well right now. Just uh, trying to get the counterattacks going and keeping most guys back. Yeah, that front three of uh, Hernandez, Cuckoo, and Abdi. Really great speed in each one of them. And I think having to deal with that when you're a frontier defenseman is really not the <laughs> most fun thing to do. And the back three for Central is also really keeping it together making sure nothing gets through as well. Yeah, Central bringing their most key players back. Ooh. Look for a cross here. Ooh. Ooh. Just a little late Dang. and a little too far on that cross. Hamilton. Looking to Baggin, who looks long for Lafleur. 
Puts it right at his chest. And I suppose there was a... Some back and forth from the fans down here. Yeah, getting a little testy. I'm sure this game's uh, bringing out everything and everybody. <laughs> oh, and, and there's a, a goal. Finally, a goal. <laughs> Off some confusion inside. Wow. Once you're able to equalize. Nice play right there. Lafleur able to get his foot right around that. Yeah, the central goalkeeper looks a little shaken up, but definitely a great goal there from uh, Lafleur. Just volleyed it right out of the air, and uh, nothing they can do about that. So that's that's a huge momentum boost for Frontier going into the half, and that's exactly what you want. Yeah. Going into that half down really uh, puts some worry in the players. Totally changes the outlook of this game. No advantage given to either side now. Yeah, when you've got it juggling around in the box, you know, good things tend to happen, and we've seen that on both goals so far. Yeah, really getting it up close and personal with that goalie. Really ups the tension and the pressure on him. Interesting strategy from Central to just kick it as far as you can to nobody in particular. <laughs> Out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> might uh, might have worked yeah. before, but not there. And Georgita looking up for Hamilton. A little too far. In the 36th minute, Frontier goal scored by number three, Ethan LaFleur. Good move by Hineski. Now looking into Bagdon or Arnold. Yeah. You know, before the game, we heard that Tom and Sa Hamilton is one of the most relaxed players you've ever seen. And I think Hineski really kind of is very relaxed like that as well, too, in the midfield. Mm -hmm. And now a central player might be a bit shaken up. One last little bit of action before the half. And Bagdon clears it. Ooh, the speed of the flur here. Can't quite turn around. Puts up his hands. Oh, interesting. Pass. It's a three on four. Ooh. And a very, very hard challenge by Abdi. Going studs first. Calls for a yellow card over here from the from the Frontier fans. Nick does not like that. <laughs> yeah. Did look like a bit of a dangerous challenge though. Yeah. <laughs> Hamilton with a fancy dribbling. Oh, it does the same move again. He's able to get to that side and put in a good ball. Oh. And no oh. he's there. Perfect ball by Hamilton, but none of his teammates uh, were quite in there. <laughs> Truly a great effort up that left side. Not much more you could ask for there. 
What's the uh, soccer equivalent of handles in basketball? Soccer equivalent of handles, like dribbles. <laughs> I suppose it would just be foot skill, maybe? Yeah. Skill and just... Whatever it is, Hamilton showed that right there. Yes, he did. <laughs> he showed handles. I think we can say <laughs> handles. Most people understand. Yeah. And now it's just the rest keeping the clock here until the end of the first half. Here's another throw in from the. Ooh. Putting it right in there. Wakis. Oh, Sindhu taking it. Ooh. Oh, another. Another shot to the head. <laughs> Here's the counter attack led by Bagdon. Arnold. Oh, my bad. Don't worry, I've done that. Right. And Arnold looking for a goal. Rough angle. So the refs got to call it here, I think. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that'll do it from the first half. Uh, we'll be back for the second half. Looks like a great game, plenty of action. Yeah, both uh, both teams scoring a goal. What? Really showing that their offenses can, can get it done tonight. And hope we'll see more of that in the second half. It looks, looks like there's some controversy with the referee coming off the field. Talking to the Frontier players, but I don't think any cards were given out. So we'll be back in 10 minutes for the start of the second half. Financial support for FCAT's coverage of local high school sports provided by Leader Home Centers, your hometown home center with five locations to serve you in Amherst, South Deerfield, Barry, Greenfield, and Brattleboro, Vermont or online at leaderhome.com. Visit them for all your building material needs. Raymond Financial Services, LLC. Take charge of your financial future. Insurance, investments, and benefits for individuals and employers. Attorney Daniel Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. Back with the second half about to start. Both teams having one final uh, meeting before they set out to finish this game. Yeah, up in the booth, we're uh, refueled, hydrated, ready to go. Elevated. Yeah. My fuel is a Kit Kat. Mine was pizza. <laughs> That was the Kit Kat. <laughs> Believe it or not. Central ready to go. Ready to keep on doing what they've been doing and keep up those long balls, trying to give Hernandez, Abdi, and Kuku those uh, opportunities in the box. And the long ball. Yeah, you know, it was tough on the walk back up to the booth. We were just getting mobbed by fans left and right. Oh, I know, you know. This job, as great as it is, <laughs> you know. Wouldn't trade it for the world. Wouldn't trade it for the world, <laughs> but it's 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 got its uh, hard points, you know. Yeah. We can no longer and hide. And a good slap away by Wakis. Can't hide in obscurity anymore. No, it's past that past that <laughs> point. You know, we wanted to get that beyond that point at one point, but looking back, <laughs> and that was it. You just focus on focus on commentating, not have to worry about yeah the appearances. Yeah, all the fame. It's all different now.
You're going to need to get a little bit closer than that. <clears throat> and hopefully later on in the week when Frontier plays again, they'll have Bronchi back coming off his very uh, very scary injury against Chickpea where he slammed his back right into the post going for a save. Yeah, I heard the doctor recommended three weeks off, but you know, what do doctors really know anyway? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> when the game is calling you, nothing can uh, mute that call. It's all mind over matter anyway. Yeah, I mean, nerves? Uh, what are those? <laughs> is that a band? You can go to medical school to find all that out. Uh-huh. <laughs> Bagdon looking in the middle. Arnold. Deterred. So I mean, we can, we gotta each nominate uh, our fan of the game, and then I think we gotta watch them and announce it later on. So who's your nomination? I'd say uh, my nomination for fan of the game would have to be down on that down on that first row right there. Brett Robinson. Oh, really, sleeper pick, sleeper pick. Uh, really, just looking like he's having a great time tonight. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you see a smile on that guy's face yeah. all the time. Definitely engaging. Ooh, central. Fighting for position, Hernandez. And now fouled. Frontier player is not happy with that. My nominee for the night is going to be uh, Natalie Chamuka. Natalie, huh? Yeah, I, that's the... Uh, I've seen her getting into the game. She's repping red right now, so... It's going to be uh, Chamuka versus Robinson for the fan of the game tonight. Yeah, I think we can't ignore the uh, people wearing jerseys of people playing. Well, we, we already selected our uh, final two, but... Everyone else is there's props for being out here. <laughs> really? And Central putting it in. They got ahead on it. Couldn't get the placement. Oh, Brett is just getting engaged right now. He's part of the game. <laughs> <laughs> He's telling people what's going on, you know? <laughs> exactly. Good play by Haneski jumping in there. And now Abdi looking upfield to Hernandez using his speed. Good job by Wake for calling off his defenders and uh, gathering. Hernandez coming off a little hurt, seemingly after Georgina might might have uh, hit him with his head or his elbow. Hernandez trying to shake that off. Gonna need him to focus. And there's a call.
Some physicality here. And that'll be an over the back by Central on Haneski. Big boot right there. All the, oh, yeah. Somehow it got all the way through. <laughs> and that'll be a goal kick. Just missing the ball there. And Hernandez looking up. Georgita doing the right thing there, putting out a play before that speed of Hernandez overtook him. I think he wanted to put it out so it wouldn't result in a corner kick, though. I think he was a little frustrated. Yeah, now he puts him in a bit of a compromising situation. But they're going to really pack that box again, bringing the entire team back. They've got nobody up. Fleur is fast, but he's overtaken. Yeah, you know, I, b I believe Central is, uh, I think they'd really like to come away from a win. Frontier might be all right with a draw here tonight, especially without their keeper, but Central's trying to qualify for the postseason, and they do that with a win here tonight, so. Yeah, they might need this win. Only a few games left in the season. <laughs> so uh, Brett Robinson is still engaged down there. So I mean, I don't know. It's cl it's close for fan of the game. Yeah, you know, Natalie looks a little bit distracted. Yeah. Ooh. We've also got, by we've Morris, also got <laughs> Morris is called for being a little too physical there. And the fans don't like that either. No, they don't. We've got another fan up here in, in the in the in the booth, maybe coming on late for fan of the game nominee. <laughs> Seems we've got a very good friend <laughs> coming up here to the booth. <laughs> Aaron, kind of sneak it around. <laughs> Ref saw a little too much physicality there from Jocks. Really got to watch those elbows putting them up and trying to yeah, push you know, away the players with the arms. You know, that, that was a close call. I don't think it was as egregious as some people might have thought. There's, they were going both ways really. And he did kind of wrestle him to the ground there. And that's a good clear by Jocks. Here goes the counter. And Mayren is off the races. Uh, tough angle, though. Couldn't get the first touch. Yeah, the first touch was too far off his body. Yeah, he really needs to dribble a little bit closer to his body if he wants to try and get a shot. And now the central goal is down. This could be a big loss for them. He's experiencing some uh, pain, but not quite sure if he'll be able to get up here. Yeah, oh no. You hate to see this. Coach is looking for something there. He's played well all night. Looking you know. for another jersey, and it seems oh, we might man. have a new keeper coming out. This would be a big loss. He's played well all day.
Yeah, Central hopes that this is just just maybe the wind knocked out of him or or some Charlie horse. It doesn't look like it though. It looks like he's gonna need help getting off the field. Yeah, really nothing Marin could uh, do to avoid getting in that collision. Both people just trying to make a play on the ball. Yeah, you know, this is part of sport everyone hates, but you know, it's, it, it is a part of it. You know, you're risking your body out here. So I think it's a leg injury. Hard to say what which leg. So we've got a backup here, warming up. Good sportsmanship from the home crowd, giving him a round of applause. He's able to stand, but maybe not with much ease. Yeah, I think, does he have to come out of the game now since the play was stopped for him? We will see. I'm a little fuzzy on that, it, it, on that it, rule. It looks like he, yeah, he's really struggling. He's really struggling. You hate to see this. Not able to stay on his feet at this point. Yeah, the golf cart's heading out. Might not be able to leave off his own power. Really tough to watch. Given that he's all, all night, and now he's going to be carried off onto the golf cart. Yeah, Mr. C. You hate to see this. Yeah, it happens. Could really have rough repercussions on uh, Central's postseason hopes and aspirations as well. Mm -hmm. It's tough when the uh, reality of a uh, physical sport really. And yeah, you can see he's just heartbroken there. Yeah. Getting injured is uh, mentally challenging as well as just a physical toll. And now the backup goalkeeper is going to jog on and he's going to hope he can do whatever he can for his team. Yeah, Central needs to play a little tougher defense. Central's goalkeeper is Orlando Martinez. Uh, yeah, he's made some great starting goalkeeper, not backup. He made some great saves tonight, and that's going to be a big loss for them. And we just, everyone's got to hope he's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Here goes Lafleur, battling down there, and. Neski able to keep the pressure on. And there's the long clear. Ooh. After one of your close friends and teammates goes out with an injury too, it's it's tough to rebound. And you know the center's gonna have to go through that now. Mm, both teams experiencing uh, injuries to the goalkeeper now. Yeah. Having to play with their backup. Injuries have just been such a big part of sports at all levels lately, haven't they? With uh, many of the NFL's top players, Odell Beckham, Aaron Rodgers, J.J. Watt, sidelined for a long period of time. And then some athletes here at the high school level, too. And Haneski not happy with that call. And the ref... I'd like to speak to Bagden. Not happy with the words he's getting from Bagden. <laughs> Bagden maybe used to a, a little bit of different officiating back at the academy. 
this is public school soccer right here. <laughs> that doesn't fly. Yeah. This is a lot of blue bloods here. Ooh. Oh, I don't know how you can call that a penalty. Jocks, although going for the ball, really, really and whacked. There's that another injury. Player. Oh man, you hate to see this. Let's hope his eyes are open. Yeah. This is this might be a tough one. This might be a head injury. Man, oh man. And is this Hernandez number eleven? Yep. Because that would be another huge loss. Probably Central's two most important players, maybe. Going out almost simultaneously. Yeah, Frontier looking a little downcast. Putting their arms up. Doesn't seem like they like all these breaks almost. Although they are necessary. Yeah, it's kind of a little chippy here. Seen the rest talk to players on numerous occasions and now we're starting to see some, some injuries and, you know, hope things don't get too much further out of hand. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, we've seen enough. Uh, it looks like Hernandez will walk collisions. off, though. This, this is a great sign, seeing him walk off under his own power. Yeah, hopefully he'll be able to make a return later on because his presence on that top three, attacking three, will uh, be sorely missed while he's out. So we'll get underway here again. Maybe some flow will be inserted into this game. We really haven't seen much of any. Yeah. No one team has really had that much momentum going forward yeah. for any sustained period of time. So as we're approaching uh, midway, midway through the hat. Oh! Oh, man. Maybe that central keeper. Almost lost the ball. Yeah, maybe Almost some. Almost gave away the game winning goal there. There could definitely be some jitters there. But, you know. Yeah, let's hope he works those out early on. All is well that ends well for him. Mm -hmm. And that ball just a little bit too long. Yeah, nice play by Likas. A good save. So we've got two teams out here battling uh, for the win with backup goalkeepers, and you know, this, this is just what next man up is all about. Mm -hmm. That's how you got to play. Can't get hung up on any one injury. As some pretty irrelevant coach for the New England Patriots would say, just got to do your job. <laughs> oh. yeah, that's one way of uh, remembering that oh, quote. There's a chance. Ooh. Frontier. Really hoping that this you get central goalie makes a mistake. Yeah, and they get can uh, prosper from it. I, d I definitely get the feeling that they're nearing a goal here, though. Frontier. Ooh. Another corner. Yeah, central needs to get it out of there. Seems the Ooh. fans, oh, a good stop. LaFleur would like to get that one back. You can see some frustration on his face right there. Hineski with the 360 header. And now Central looking to counterattack. 
get it up the field. Uh, first touch wasn't there. putting that in the middle. Able to be cleared. Hineski looking for a pass, can't get it. Yeah, rare mistake from Hineski there in the, the midfield. Ooh. Ooh. And it looks like Georgita just slipped. And now Central looking to put the ball in. Good header by Morris. Arnold almost with a runaway chance. Yeah. yeah, I can really sense a frontier goal coming any second now with this constant pressure. But you know, all year their biggest problem has been the inability to finish. And you know. Yeah, sometimes it's on, sometimes it's not. Yeah, I've definitely talked to a number of my sources on the team and some frustrations about the lack of finishing. Yeah, when it comes down to it, goals win games, man. Yeah. Goals win games. Defense defense helps, but... Well, defense wins championships. Defense wins <laughs> championships. <laughs> So I, uh, I hate to change subjects again, but uh, the World Series is about to begin, so who, who's your pick here? Got the Dodgers versus the Astros? You know, uh, <laughs> I think I'm, uh, I'm liking the Dodgers, you know? Yeah. Got some uh, young studs. Yeah, they, do. yeah they, they got They got Bellinger, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, they got Kershaw. Mm -hmm. They got a great, uh, great bullpen coming yeah. in. Can't forget about Kenley Jansen back there. No, you can't. Yeah, and then, but you got to think about the Astros, too. Carlos uh, Correa. Mm, Jose, Jose Altuve. Altuve. Dallas Keuchel. Some great, great players on both teams. A lot of star power, and uh, should be an interesting series. I know you'll be watching every inning. <laughs> oh, you know me. <laughs> Wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> and a really wonderful night for late October. You know, sometimes we get hit with these 40-degree, 30-degree nights. I really lucked out today with a nice 60. Well, personally, I'm a little concerned about it because I think this is global warming in action. Oh, is that so? Yeah. I would, I would like it to be brisk. I'd like, it, I'd like tonight to be in the 40s, but, you know, it is what it is. Mm-hmm, you know, global warming, very controversial topic. <laughs> Some people uh, <laughs> refuse to believe it exists. Are you one of those people, Carson? And Central can't quite get around that ball. I'm not one of those people, but, you know, I hear the theories. Yeah. People see snow. No global warming, you know. There's, there's snow. Yeah, you know. I hear that a lot. We want to keep sports away from politics, though, so we'll, we'll stick on topic. Mm -hmm. There'll be another kick for Georgita. This fall, this fall night seems like a seems like a summer night almost. It does, you know? doesn't it? It's like, shall I compare this to a summer's night? It's more lovely and more temperate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does. It feels like a nice night. I I, I gotta you know, agree with you there. Rough winds <laughs> do shake the darling buds of May. <laughs> and you know, summer's least hath all too all too short a date. <laughs> oh man. Gotta love it, gotta love it. Always a good time up in the booth. <laughs> Always. 
And Central looking for that long throw in. And able to be cleared after Wakis delivers that, that clearing fist. To me, this weather just doesn't feel right. I think it feels it, fine. It's late October, man. We need some, uh, some chill in the air. Ah, we'll get it. We'll get it. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm worried, man. <laughs> All right, so with uh, we're past midway of the second half, so I think we're ready for you to reveal the uh, trivia question. All right. Well, uh, the question was, who is the last thousand-point scorer in Frontier Frontier basketball history? And that would be one of the <laughs> one of the two towers on that 2008 stampi state championship team. The twin team. towers, you could say. I could say that because although it wasn't Dan Clark, it was Brian Clark. And Karsten actually incorrectly answered this question because although they played on the same team, there were two 1,000-point scorers on the uh, 2018. And although they scored it on the same day, oh Brian man. Clark did it just before he did. Against ah, Hampshire. I see, so the wording, you know, the wording got to <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it appears that Jamie Bell would be the correct answer here. So, you know. It looks like anybody can get it wrong. I think you were a little too confident going in, Carson. Uh, a little too big for your britches, maybe. And uh, that cost you on the trivia tonight. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Well, just looking forward to the game here. <laughs> not that call was not agreed upon by Central. It seems some confusion here. So going back to the trivia, we're getting uh, some information from the coach himself, Marty Sanderson, of that 2008 team. And uh, Brian scored in, scored his thousand point in the first quarter, and Jamie Bell scored his in the third quarter. Very eventful night during a very eventful season. You can say that again. Every team trying to accomplish what that team accomplished in the state championship. Yep, no frontier team uh, except for volleyball having a state championship since. Might we get a state champion this fall? Mm, Frontier Soccer certainly thinks so. But they're going to face a lot harder opposition than Central. And we'd be reminisced if we didn't talk about uh, the girls' soccer team having, having themselves a nice rebound season this year as well. Yeah, they've done very well in their league. I think only second to Mar. And they've got their uh, senior night coming up against Hopkins, and I think we'll be in the booth for that game as well. Yes, we will. So tune in. Ooh, and Haneski, incidentally, I think. Don't think that was uh, blatant, but. And he wants words. Table the official. Tabletops. The central player. And it looks like this one might be coming down to a draw. Yeah, as time's winding down, you know, neither team really gaining that substantial advantage. Frontier trying to counterattack now. Got the attackers running up. I tell you, if this game ends in a draw, though, there's going to be some... Uh, Coulda, shoulda, woulda's for both teams. Some missed opportunities. Mm -hmm. And as soon as uh, possible, we'll have Arnold, Morse, and Marin returning to play. So the big guns coming back on for Frontier. Yeah, after having a much needed break, hopefully they'll give, uh, give Topman a good night's sleep tonight. Come away with a good result here. As well as number 20, subbing in for number 17. And it looks like Hernandez came back on. We might have missed that, but... After that injury scare, he's back in the midfield. Yeah, good to see uh, one of their players return. Yeah, the goalie's definitely hurting, though. A close call right there. Some fans thought it might have had a chance. Looked like it. Here we get a goal kick. 
and Haneski. Oh. Haneski looking to calm things down. Get some interior passes. Hamilton looking to Mayrand. I can't quite get it. Central able to evade Marin and Bagdon on defense. Yes, yeah, a great defensive. It's uh, a great defensive work there, keeping the central player in front of him. Mm -hmm. Good physicality by Haneski getting around that central player, but can't quite. Might have gotten away with a little bit of a push off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Marin might have lost the uh, lost the ball in the light there. So I think it is senior night. We should mention the seniors one more time. They've done a fine job tonight and throughout the entire season with LeFleur and Hamilton leading the team in points. Oh. With Arnold not too far behind, coming up with some goals and assists of his own, as well as Marin providing that much needed speed and Georgita that just rock solid presence in the back line. Along with uh, Graves, who has, uh, for how much he's played tonight, has done well for himself. Was able to play a solid, uh, play some solid minutes. Yeah, and like Coach Dotman said, just a great, a great influence. Ooh, 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 ooh! Frontier almost got away. Oh man! With something after that ball hit a bump. You can sense this crowd is just going to erupt if the Frontier is able to put one away here. Yeah, I think the players will uh, feel the same way if they can do that. And Arnold looking to put that ball in the center. Central putting their men back, except for one. It's high. Ooh, 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 it's going ooh, around. Oh, oh my God. And two players went flying into the goal. Yeah, Frontier just throwing themselves at the ball and giving everything Central they have. may have injured their backup goalkeeper now. My, oh, my. What is going on out here tonight? Yeah, he had just a few Frontier players Jeez. slam into him in the air. Let's hope he's all right. What in the world is going on? I mean... Is the starting goalkeeper going to go back on now? I mean, what in the world? Jeez, Louise. Unbelievable. If you're the coach of Central, you are just scratching your head thinking, what is going to happen next? Oh, I'm sure he couldn't have prepared for this. I mean, you wonder how prepared that backup goalie was for this job, and now they're going to need to go to their double backup goalie. This is just not been central keepers night. I mean I think they're just looking down the line at the bench right now just thinking who's going to put on that put on that next yeah, goalie who's, uh, who's the best of their hands they might even take a player out of the field to do it or maybe you know he'll stay in the game it's yeah it seems like he's able to get back on his feet <laughs> Frontier probably looking to take advantage of uh, that and start getting some real hard shots off. Try and mess with his. his I, I think they might be having to make a substitute here, though. No idea who it's going to be. Because the coach looks like he's looking out thinking, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. All right. I think they're going to let him stay in. I mean, wow, Central's just been... I guess Frontier's winning the physicality matchup. <laughs> yeah. They've, they've got zero injuries so far. There's zero significant injuries anyway. Yeah, they're coming away a lot cleaner from this than Central is. That's for sure. And it, and it looks like... But what could have happened is Topman could have said, you have to take out that goalie because his injury resulted in a stop of play. But the ref went over to Topman and said, are you going to allow him to stay in? 
and Tottman said, yes, you will. So great sportsmanship by Tottman. Because, mm-hmm. you know, otherwise Central would have had to throw in some kid who's never played keeper before. Yeah, if that wasn't the case already. Yeah. A lot of class all around out here in Western Mass. Oh, yeah. All class, no sass. In Western Mass. <laughs> oh, d- don't start, Alex. Don't start. <laughs> save that for yeah, uh, my, f- my freestyle game. Will, it'll come out at some point. Yeah, save that for the <laughs> mixtape. Good clearance. Speaking of mixtapes, I've heard uh, two of our classmates, Isaac Peralt and Jack Trozen, will be coming out with uh, a, a little uh, rap track. Oh, I'm sure when that <laughs> drops, we'll hear all about it. I'm sure it will shoot up the charts. <laughs> Here we go. Good stop by Haneski. Bagden fighting for it. And now Hernandez trying to do something on that corner. And that stays a throwing. All right, so the votes are in, and I think Brett Robinson is going to be our fan of the game tonight. Will he get it? I think he will. I had a feeling. You know, he's just, he's a Red Hawk at heart. He is. That's all you got to say when you watch him, him fanning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he really, he supports his team for what it is. Doesn't hold back. Yeah. Student of the game. Always up on Ooh. the front lines. Now Frontier trying to turn in a counterattack. Looking for LaFleur. Nope, Hamilton. Who looks towards the center. Nice cross. For Jocks. Got to give a lot of credit to the central defense here. If they're able to hold on to a tie. Mm, they've had to step up yeah. with this uh, starting keeper out. Good clearance. Ooh, Central's got to fight for that. And now Georgita. Good ball into Lafleur, who goes for a shot. Central's Can't get one off. Yeah, Central's bending, but they're not breaking back there. Slip around. Give a good ball. Uh, can't connect with it. But Hamilton has it now at the top. And his second touch is just a little too far. Seven and a half minutes to go here. Yeah, time is winding down. Frontier getting desperate here. They're, they're definitely controlling possession, though. And now Georgito looking towards the center. And Frontier is clear. Ooh. But can't get a shot. These central defenders are everywhere. Yeah, they've got they know what they're doing out here. Now corner. Put right into the middle. Oh. And the central keeper is knocked on his back. Yeah, he referee saw some contact there. It's definitely a foul. He got laid out. Yeah, these uh frontier players can't I can't really understand why when they <laughs> fly into these players, <laughs> you know, they fall back. I know. You know, being a student of physics, <laughs> you know, you really got to look at Newton's third law for that. <laughs> oh, and yeah. Every force has an equal and opposite reaction. Exactly. So, you know, you apply a force, that force but will end up somewhere. But surely no player on Frontier's soccer team could commit a foul, <laughs> is, oh, is that the, Im- is that the implication? <laughs> I'm not going to imply anything tonight. I'm just going to state the facts. All right, now we've got a timeout from Central, I believe. 
That's so be an important moment for both coaches to communicate yeah. their last wishes. It's, this is where they make the big bucks in moments like this. Oh yeah, this is this is where leaders show. You know, I yeah, somebody's gonna have to step up. So I know it's not quite like basketball where you've got shots all the time, but who do you want taking the last shot here if, if you're a uh, frontier? You know what, tonight I'm, uh, I want Ben Arnold to either take that shot or I think I want Connor Bagdon taking that. I know both players have strong right foots yeah. and if given the opportunity can really just drill that ball. Yeah. And I think power is what frontier needs tonight. I'm just, I'm just looking for a senior maybe to put this one away. On their senior night, that would be a story tale. That would be a, that, that would be a, a tearjerker. <laughs> it really would be. Get this whole place up on its feet. And you got to figure if if you're central, you want one of the big three on the those front attacking players to be taking that shot. Mm -hmm. Central looking to <laughs> send this one deep in. And the power just isn't quite there. And good stop by Moore, sensing that pass and able to jump it. And it looks like uh, Central is going to try and throw it again. That's that's a 30, 30 yard throw he's looking at. Yeah, and it comes up short again. Yeah, they should really focus on trying to get it. Right in the thick of that frontier team. Ooh, just a little too far. And Georgita sends that up on to it. Ooh. And you know, probably a smart play, but yeah. very you know, frontier advancing. That now is you give Arnold a chance. Yeah. To put it in, you know. Really conservative, maybe too conservative there from the central defender. Yeah, Arnold wants to put it away here. Here comes the boomerang. And it's right there. Ooh. Too many bodies. Ooh, oh, oh, very nice clever play. play right around Arnold. That's quickness right there. Yes, it is. <laughs> Just under five minutes to go. Georgita trying to... And able to strip it away and give a good ball, but does not stay in bounds. And now possession will change here. And the referee will not change his mind. <laughs> All right. This is fascinating. Is there any law of physics that defines that one, Karsten? <laughs> No, I'm, uh, I'm sure, I mean, physics is just defining <laughs> everything out here, but... <laughs> that is true. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing fits that instance quite so perfectly. Maybe we'll have to get Kurt Markle up in here in the booth one day. Oh, that would, that would be a day. <laughs> That'd be a night. <laughs> Explain every little thing. Clock is just winding down here, and both teams wanting to break the tie. Mm, ooh. Nifty pass, and Hernandez can't quite get to it. Coming up on three minutes left, a minute away from the referee stopping the clock. And now Frontier here comes desperate. the bomb. Georgita just putting everything into that kick. Ooh, it's going far. And Central able to clear it. Here comes Bagden. Got to watch out for their feet. They got to take a shot here. And good collection by the Central keeper. 
you know, at a certain point, you got to put it, put the ball on net. Stop passing it. Good header. Oh. Ducks hit to the head. Yeah, not to anybody in particular. Oh. Now Frontier with the throw in at about midway. Jocks will take it. Or nope. And they need early. Ooh, on Looking for Bagdon. Or LaFleur. Here it's there, it's there. Will oh, we get a shot? Not on goal. And nope, that will sail out as we come up on two minutes remaining. Just straight up anguish from these fans here. Desperation. And you have, you have to think, if, if they can put one away, if they can actually get a shot on net, it's got a good chance going in with his backup goalkeeper. It really does, and I think that's all that they should be hoping for right now. Yeah. But someone's got to actually kick it at the net. That <laughs> is very true. Because right now they're just passing it around. Anybody, I mean, take a shot from wherever. Yeah. Just, just get a shot. Especially with guys that have legs such as Georgita does. Yeah, I mean, he can take it from anywhere over the halfway line and really just get a high shot. Yeah, exactly. Maybe take advantage of this keeper's positioning. Central, though, still trying to yeah, still trying to attack the goal, and George Ute will step in there. Yeah, Central doing Arnold a great job. chasing that down. Cent Keeping it in. And that is a goal kick. Not given to Frontier. Yeah, you know, I thought it was a pretty good job by Central there, but the fans are unhappy with this play. Yeah, you know what? These Frontier fans are not happy at all with that. I don't know what they're complaining about on that one, though. No, it seemed like the Central player did a good job of containing that ball and not letting, not letting anybody touch it. This has really been a great effort by both teams here tonight. Oh. And there's the goal kick. And we must be coming up on the end here. Ref's checking his watch. Any second now. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not one of those Any second. <laughs> and I, it's coming on the goal kick. I'm that, calling it. Call I'm it, calling it. Call in it. the air. While well, it's in the air. I Very called good, it. Alex. Very good. All right. I mean, you know, FCAT comes out here, and they do an amazing job yeah. with the broadcast. Check it out on Channel 12 and the Four Towns, Conway, Sunderland, Deerfield, Whaley. Yeah, thanks to our camera guys. Yeah, they do a great job up there. You got FCAT Media, our YouTube channel. Go on there to watch some great FRS sports, FRS events, plays, concerts, and more. And you got a play of the game for today? I gotta stick with uh, gotta stick with the floor. Yeah, putting away you know, that goal with, with the goal. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna rescind that. I'm gonna give that to Wakus. Although he let up that one goal. Overall, just true. First career start. First career start, and he had he had a great workload. I mean, tonight he did not have an easy time. Yeah, one last time, congratulations to all the seniors. This is their last home game. Had some great careers. They'll, be, they'll sorely, sorely be missed. And we'll be seeing more of these guys in the, in the postseason this year. Yes, we will. And a great job by our opponents, Central. We'll wish them a nice uh, long bus ride home. Yep, I'm sure uh, maybe they were hoping for a win at first, but at the end of the day, they were lucky to get out of here with the tie, to be honest. Yeah, especially with those injuries. So thank you for watching Frontier Community Access Television's broadcast of tonight's soccer matchup, which was against Central. And I'm Karsten. And I was Alex. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> watching. <laughs>